the Dafyoimi movement was launched in 1923 by Rav Meir Shapiro at the famed Knessia Gadola in Vienna, attended by the Holy Chofetz Chaim. The movement may predate Dirshu by many decades, but what Dirshu has brought to this worldwide phenomena is accountability. Not accountability to another or to an organization, but the possibility of accountability to oneself. Thousands of Jews around the world participate in Dirshu's system of voluntary testing on Daf Yomi each month, challenging themselves to closed book tests on the 30 pages of Talmud covered that month in the Daf Yomi cycle. But the pinnacle of the Dirshu Daf Yomi framework is an unprecedented program, an ambitious challenge so daunting it appeals only to the most dedicated and focused scholars. This is the Iron Man of Torah Learning, a program called Kinyan Shas. Orson Meach Glen Hazel is the epicenter of the famed Kiruv Revolution. Today, a bustling campus, the sound of Torah resonating within its walls throughout the day. But there are times when things quieten down, when the Abrechim head home for lunch or on those long Sunday afternoons. It's at these times that you might notice a lone figure toiling away in the base Midrash. Rabbi Aran Cohen is in some ways the poster child of the success of the Kirov movement and the maturing of South Africa into a respected Torah community. I grew up on the East Rand. And uh, went to Wits University and then I had the wonderful opportunity to go to Eretz Yisrael to learn in Yeshiva at Eretz Yisrael. And that enabled me to relearn. And since then, I've been focusing on learning and teaching Torah. I have the good fortune to be involved in the Kenyan Shas program in Dirshu which has as its objective the learning and revising of all of Shas, coming out knowing it. The Kenyan Shas program is a relentless program involving monthly, four-monthly and biannual tests on Shas. The biannual tests take place after Pesach and after Sukkot and they involve testing from the beginning of Brochus until wherever the Daf Yomi happens to be holding at that moment. The actual learning varies on how, how much we need to be preparing, how close to a test it happens to be. But uh, on a general sense, it's from, from when you wake up in the morning until when you go to sleep at night, something's involved in the learning and in the revision. I think the Dirshu Kenyan Shas program is unique and as far as I know it's the only program that is aligned with the Daf Yoimi schedule and that has the huge advantage of making sure that you have to cover the material at a specific point in time and there's no let up. Kenyan Shas is not just an individual project but is a family effort and as with any Torah study it's a joint project between a man and his soulmate. Because of the relentless nature, it means that if you're on holiday, or if you're not on holiday, if it's Yom Tov, or if it's Cholomoyed, whatever else is happening, if there's a Simcha, or if there's a wedding, or if there's a bris, or whatever is happening, everything, the learning has to carry on. And that only is possible with the committed involvement and investment from the whole family. The role my wife plays is that she's the one that makes it happen. If not for her continued encouragement and input and making sure that the rest of life happens, there's no ways I would be able to even think of doing it. Rabbi Cohen's first exposure to Gomorrah didn't come until he was in his early 20s, having started out in the world of secular academics. I uh, have a degree in chemical engineering from Wits University and an honours in operations research from UNISA, neither of which I use. I had the good fortune to start learning Gemara when I was at university. My first Gemara Rebbe was Alan Zilberg and we used to learn once a week. The scope of what Shas is going to cover and the degree of insight needed to understand it properly 
and the connections between the different topics that are several orders of magnitude above what anything, anything that I saw at university. Rabbi Cohen doesn't see his achievements in Torah as a consequence of his superior intellect, but rather a reflection of focus and desire, combined with a strategic approach. The bottom line is that success in Torah is not dependent on a person's inherent capabilities. Some things they might find easier, some things they might find more difficult. Some people remember better, some people understand better. But the long-term success is dependent on the person's own investment in the learning, not on their natural capabilities. The first strategy that I would suggest to somebody coming to do it is, like the four-minute mile, understand that it can be done. Once you understand that it can be done, be in contact with other people who have done it and see what tools they use. Some tools will work for you, some tools won't. It says, You have to use strategies to wage war. That's what Shlomo Amalek says in Mishle. Rabbi Cohen is no stranger to a strategic approach to Gomorrah. In 2006, he released a book laying out a unique approach to learning Gomorrah, one which involves color-coding each section of the Gomorrah to make the jumble of words stand out in a logical and systematic way. He has now covered the entire Talmud himself using this approach. Baruch Hashem, I'm now finishing Shas with focus on learning with Rashi. The next cycle I'm going to be focusing on extending that learning at with the Toysusim as well and consolidating my knowledge. Being that I've seen the tremendous benefit that I personally have received from this and other people involved in the Dafyomi, I'd like to create a framework in South Africa to get as many people involved in Dafyomi as possible. With this in mind, Rabbi Cohen has created an organization called Chevra Shas to support those involved in Daf Hayomi. Some people will benefit from being part of a community where there are people learning Daf Yoimi. Other people can benefit from hearing the shir once, twice, three times. That gives them an exposure to the magnitude and the grandeur of Shas. Other people, and I'm encouraging all those in communal positions to do at least the 30 Duff tests will up their game in a big way and put them in a position to be of so much more benefit to the whole community. And for those people who want to try to do the Kenyan Shas program, I very much would like to help them, assist them, guide them, share various techniques, encourage them, inspire them, and in that way we can build resources for the whole community. Only 10 days ago, Rabbi Cohen wrote a closed book test on all 2,711 double-sided pages of the Talmud, together with hundreds of other Kenyan Shas participants. But what does it feel like to spend over seven years reviewing thousands of pages of complex Talmud? We asked Rabbi Cohen if he enjoyed the process, what it feels like to be finishing, and whether it involved any sacrifice. Enjoy? There's nothing more pleasurable. <laughs> My feelings about finishing Shas is one of tremendous gratitude to Hashem. The, the Kenyan Shas program does not involve any sacrifice, only investment.